Okay, I'm hiding in here amongst the uh, oh, the shelter. It's turning to crap. <laughs> so we're just having a little quick look around um, uh, Port McDonald. I don't think we're really going to see too much of it. It's a wicked little port over here where uh, it's the crayfish or the lobster capital of South Australia. Um, there's a German mine over here and uh, it floated into kind of like the port here and they managed to uh, disarm it, I believe, or somehow. But uh, it's interesting, yeah, the, the, uh, the explosive in the mine was uh, hexanite, six times more powerful than TNT, it says. When any of the horns were touched, it was set off a series of chemical and electrical reactions, which caused the, uh, the mine device to explode. Uh, the total mine weight was approximately a quarter of a tonne. So I'll just swing around here and boom. How about one of those turning up on your doorstep? Ugh, yuck. This building that we were talking about uh, earlier, the custom house, it was your one-stop shop. It was uh, built in 1863 and it was the only building, one of its kind, in South Australia to combine police station, four cells, courthouse, post office, telegraph office, with residents and customs office. It had substantial additions and alterations to the complex and has been made over the years, including stables at the rear, they no longer exist. Um, the building was occupied as a police station until 1958 um, and the building was developed on a grand scale, indicating the prosperity, was it? The significant port facility, it says. There you go. And it is, look at that, it's a, oh solid structure not not gonna scrape out of those cells So there we have it, Port Mac, as it's uh, shortened form, or Port McDonald, is known for um, South Australia's largest lobster fishing fleet. It's called the uh, lobster capital of uh, Australia. There's not a lot of boats out there at the moment because uh, lobster season's between uh, October and May, I believe. So even according to me, I wouldn't go fishing out there in a boat. I think half the fleet's out there at the moment. So uh, what to do in Port Mac? Grab some fish and chips. We'll get that lunch after all. Oh, well here's our park up spot for the night. Beauty. So, so just uh, around the corner from uh, Port McDonald. Look at this. Lovely pristine beach, great swimming. Just a shame it wasn't another 20 degrees warmer. Oh, oh well, you can't win them all. But we've been lucky with the weather. It's been on and off again. There's the onside, there's the offside. <laughs> uh, and there's the van parked up over here. Lovely tar sealed spot. And um, we've got a toilet and an outside shower there if we need it. But hey, thank you to uh, the Browns Bay area for putting these facilities on. We'll look after it. Hope everybody else does, so it's for everybody. Good morning. We're up and at them. We're uh, still in Browns Bay, uh, at Browns Bay Beach Car Park. Had the place to ourselves. Uh, great little spot, good night's sleep. We have just had a van just turn up just now. Um, still overcast, so uh, don't know what the day will bring, but I'm apologizing to the people of McDonnell, Port McDonnell, I called it Port McDonald's. Sorry, humble apologies. So previously to this video, we were all in Port McDonnell. Great place, great fish and chips. Sun did come out, looks spectacular. We're onwards. We're going inland, it's gonna be a quick little joint today. 
um, back sort of in the Mount Gambier way and then heading west and uh, got a couple little towns to stop at on the way. Please, just because I pronounced the names wrong, keep following Sweet As RVing, click that like and subscribe button. Love it. Right, just left the uh, Browns Bay, good campsite. Travelled just a few k's down the road, I think it was only about 11 k's down the road, and come to this little spot out in the forestry. Real nice, there's lots of little, um, little events to come and have a look at here in the forestry. And uh, we're going to this Hell's Hole now, Hell's Hole. That was um, recommended to me from a couple of ladies when we are in uh, uh, Tantanola, um, the Tiger Hotel. Um, was standing there and uh, these lovely ladies came out and this one woman had uh, travelled, I think she said seven years, um, around Australia and um, sadly uh, her husband passed but uh, she's teamed up with another lady there and uh, who knows they might get back on the road again and hopefully there's a bit of inspiration if you're watching. So yeah she said to come to Hell's Hole, it's pretty good so here we are, let's go, let's go check it out. And here we have it. There's a cantilevered platform that looks pretty sturdy. Wow! Like the gate there, and we pop out into this. It's about 30 meters across. <laughs> um, it's about 38 meters down to the bottom, and we're about 30 odd meters deep. I can just see the bottom down there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a uh, pretty awesome little site. Gives you a little bit of the heebie jeebies when you come up first. But uh, here we have it Hell's Hole. <laughs> and cool. Neat little structure and well, well set up. So to dive this. So I guess. Oh, I think I was thinking about the gate. It is a gate, so it's a gate at the end here. So the divers must have some kind of rope ladder or something like that that they put down in there so they can dive. Only dive with obviously licenses and I think permits and things as well too. So yeah, cool little spot. the northern lights flash took a photograph on a paris street have you ever climbed a tall tree asked someone for mercy gave something away that wasn't free. i don't want to get a vision of you stuck in my head because i know that you were meant to be wilder another night of television while you're lying in bed it's slowly gonna be the death of you
and I was in a little town there, Port Ma Donnell. So yeah, pretty good. And then we'll uh, have a cool, guess what? Just, uh, that was a snake. He uh, went that way. He was only about, uh, he was only about three feet long. He's dived off.